I think everybody who wants to be in already is in, so let's let's start with the next talk. Here is uh, Moitza Kompara Lukancic to talk to us about abbreviations. That hopefully doesn't mean that the talk yes. is going to be very short. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, the role of invisible lexicographer in the compilation of the Slovene Dictionary of Abbreviations. I'm coming from the University of Maribor, where I teach languages within three faculties, and uh, my research is oriented mainly towards abbreviations. Um, so I have the dictionary here, it's literally visible, and I brought some copies, so in case you would like to have one, just come, and I will be happy to give you one for free. Uh, it's Slovenski Slovar Krajšau, it's the Slovene Dictionary of Abbreviation, how it is translated towards English. I think it's a, a work of great importance for the Slovenian language because it's the first one. Um, if we compare to other languages like Italian, Spanish, English, we have a lot of different uh, dictionaries of abbreviations. And um, this one gathers mainly Slovene only Slovene abbreviations and expansions, so the meanings. Um, as I said before, when I was preparing this, I checked all the possible sources from abroad because we don't have dictionaries in Slovenia. This is the first one. Um, just to see what is the best structure, what to do, how to compile a nice work. It was not very easy, so it was quite difficult to prepare everything. We were waiting for this dictionary for 75 years. I think it's a bit too long, but you know, <laughs> we had to do other things in the meantime. Because the first dictionary was actually published back in 1948 by uh, Zupancic. It's a very old book. You can still find it in the archives of the National Library. Uh, it was, it, it's basically a dictionary that was compiled with no internet, with no software um, help. Uh, but it has still a lot of uh, important data at, and it's also an important work that gives us information on how people were dealing the topic back in the 50s and the 40s, let's say. Um, the Slovene Dictionary of Abbreviation, um, it's basically a work where, where I also provided some um, an introduction into abbreviations. So it's not a classic dictionary where you don't find an introduction into abbreviation, but due to the fact that in Slovene we don't have other publications except all my papers that I've been uh, publishing for the past uh, 20 years. And the monographs, I said, let's just uh, add some data so the people people will know um, the topic a bit more. So I'm talking about um, abbreviation on a diachronic and synchronic level and I also examine the position of abbreviation in Slovene. So where can we find them actually in different Slovene dictionaries, maybe some uh, mono, usually monolingual or the orthographic one. And uh, there is also a classification of abbreviation so you actually know how they are dealt by important and prominent lexicographers. Um, mainly the position of abbreviations is well, it, it was well described in the past in the orthographic dictionary, especially the one that was published back in 2001. And then also in general and some specialized dictionaries here and there. Um, and uh, I also gather information concerning that just briefly into this work. Um, I provide also some examples of dictionary um, entries so that people know what to expect in the dictionary. And I provide an introduction so the, of, concerning the design and the micro and uh, microstructure of uh, abbreviation. There is a list of around 4,000 meanings. So it's a 3,000 and something abbreviations and over 4,000 meaning because one abbreviation can have sometimes even 10 meanings, then depends. Um, and basically I um, included general abbreviations and also some terminological ones and all that are applicable to Slovene. Um, you can find it uh, online, uh, but it's just a paper dictionary. It's not an online dictionary. Why? Because the Slovene Agency for Research gave me the money to publish it. And we have 500 free copies, in case you would like one, just let me know. 
how it all started uh, when I was a student 25 years ago. I started collecting them in, uh, as, as a student of translation in uh, simple databases, usually uh, Word, Excel, uh, because we were not dealing with abbreviation that much at university level. So uh, the database got bigger and bigger. I prepared my uh, diploma, master and PhD thesis in that. And uh, the first, um, the first um, sample of the dictionary, let's say uh, as an attempt, I would say, an experimental online dictionary is over there, as you can see, called Slovarček Reshaw. Slovarček means a small dictionary, and it contains also foreign, foreign abbreviations, and they are all uh, translated, so I provide official translations. Um, then afterwards, the problem was that um, it was di difficult to um, catch all abbreviations, so there were some abbreviations missing at all times, so one was not there, but then one day you, you are somewhere reading the newspaper and you see an abbreviation and you think, is it included in my database? And you realize it's very difficult, I have to do something in order to include them all, or the majority. So for my PhD, I, I um, um, prepared an algorithm for automatic recognition of abbreviations in electronic text. I also met um, people who are who were involved in the topic. Also, the first person who prepared similar um, algorithm from the University of Las Vegas. Um, and uh, then we had to adapt it a bit for the Slovene abbreviations. And th thanks to my mentor, um, we obtained also the permits from the Slovene the newspaper Delo, and they gave us um, five years of the newspaper that is published every day. So we filtered with the algorithm those five years of newspaper, and we obtained around 3,000 uh, abbreviations and expansions. So what the algorithm does, basically, he, he, if I or the algorithm takes the abbreviation, so it's uh, looking for the abbreviation and the meaning, and it has to, it's matching somehow, um, and then provides um, the source that we can use afterwards. And what I did after my PhD, so, so this is also still a long time ago, I prepared a dictionary of abbreviation that is available on the website of Termania um, that is entirely automatically compiled. So without the, well, we still have to check everything at the very end to read but we do the extraction of abbreviations and um, expansions automatically. We did, we did the lemmatization and then afterwards also the recognition of the language. And next to every single foreign abbreviation, we add the language. Then the next step would be to do something with the translation, but then we stopped, me and my colleague. Um, so uh, this uh, dictionary is then the last thing that I did. Um, it's not really thick, a colleague said before, but those are just Slovene abbreviations and are, uh, it's like the ones that are for sure the ones that need to be there. Uh, I have a bigger database at home that is 600 pages long. I have in everything in Word because it's the easiest way. Um, and I extracted 140 pages for this for this publication, the Slovene ones. Uh, there are 15 other languages involved uh, among them. I would say the predominant is English, followed by German and Italian and Latin and so on. So the dictionary was published this March um, and two faculties helped me within this process and the University um, of Maribor Press also uh, provided everything as far as the technical part is also concerned. Um, and if I just move towards abbreviations just a bit, I do believe you're all familiar with abbreviation. If I ask you one, you would be easily pointing or thinking of them. Um, there are plenty of nice, um, concepts that I like, um, especially the first one, there are issues and problems with abbreviations from my form, former professor, um, or uh, no, almost no language is immune to them. And we can find really find a, a dictionaries of abbreviation in many languages, uh, not unfortunately not all for now, but I hope uh, that more publications like that will be available because sometimes it's very difficult to find the meaning of, um, of, of an abbreviation online. And especially if um, 
we don't know where it's, if it's coming from a language like um, Slovene. Um, I checked different dictionaries before compiling this one. I'm also in contact with different authors. So in English, we have really a lot of uh, sources available. Uh, two or three dictionaries in French or two dictionaries in English, for, uh, in Italian, and several Spanish. Um, and after that, after exploring the structure and everything, then I started compiling. And I published first the Slovene part. Um, I mainly used the um, structure of the colleagues from other linguistic um, frames to prepare the um, foreign dictionary um, entries just to see what they did with the translation, what they did with the um, field, let's say, um, qualifiers, uh, language, and especially the foreign abbreviations, if they included some other data like um, descriptions, if they are needed here and there. So this will be, I hope, one day also published uh, when I will have the time to go through the remaining 600 pages. Um, as far as the history, as I said before, it started with two little uh, dictionaries, two little uh, lexicographic attempts that I presented before. Prior to that was the one from 1948, and the last one that was that is published that was published not long ago, uh, covering 3,004 abbreviations, more than uh, 4,000 expansions. Um, so basically, this dictionary was uh, compiled. Um, manually, automatically. So first I started manually, then um, I used the algorithm. Um, so, and, but there, are, there were still questions, what to include, what not to include. For example, if you think of the uh, situation we faced three years ago with COVID, uh, we had quite a lot of abbreviations that came in that period. And they were very, um, much used in media and in newspapers on, among the people. But now, um, if I think of some abbreviations that were used in Slovene um, within the COVID pandemic, uh, I still have, pro I, now I have problems um, in a way thinking of the real meaning, but maybe three years ago was very easy. So this is also one thing we have to, one thing we have to bear in mind an abbreviation comes to a language and can leave a language after a short time. So if I think of PC and T abbreviation, it was very f uh, famous in Slovene. I don't remember right now what's the meaning, but was something connected to the virus. Uh, and if I also ask my students, for example, what is the meaning, they would say, ah, oh, we don't remember. Yes, it was very uh, often used in different um, settings, but maybe we don't need to include it because it's already an old one. So it, this is also a problem, what to include, what not to include. Shall we include the former currencies uh, used before Euro within the countries of the European Union, for example? Uh, if you think of the Italian Lira, we would say, well, maybe we don't need to, even if the us Italians, I'm still half Italian, we would say the Lira will always be the Lira, la Lira. But if you think Think of some other countries, for example, Croatia, they just got Euro and maybe we should include their currency. So a lot of uh, questions um, that were um, coming up when, when we were preparing the last, um, the last version. Uh, the, they are alphabetically ordered so um, and it was prepared with the help of the algorithm, then manual, manually as well, and then the very last part where we had to check everything once again. Two um, editors also helped me who were involved in lexicography um, in the preparation of different dictionaries within um, the, publish the leading publishing house um, uh, in, involved into, in lexicography in the past in Slovenia. Uh, and also two colleagues who helped me then with the uh, revision. One is also sitting here with us. Um, and then after all the correction and everything, I managed to publish it. It was not a very easy uh, job, but somehow uh, I am happy that it's that is here. How it looks like. So um, uh, 
As you can see, we have some, some examples. So as I said, they are, the entries are arranged alphabetically, also within everything. Uh, Miro Romic from Abembis helped me quite a lot with the um, uh, preparation of the documentation, I would say also the database before the printing stage. And we have some, let's say, if you take A as it's visible there, we have different expansions that were um, obtained in two ways, so manually and uh, also um, automatically. So if you think of uh, automatic extraction abbreviations like etc. or like this one, it's adjective here, you don't find them in newspapers. They are just placed there, but usually the expansion is not next to them. So usually those abbreviations that end with a, a period, they were manually collected. Um, but some others automatically, yes, why not? Um, as you can see, when we have ALT, for example, we have also a little explanation. And in case we have another type of abbreviation used, we have a cross-reference to that also in the um, in the, dic in the dictionary, the same is the case of some others. Or we could have a foreign word that is also um, used in Slovene, as you can see here. And then we have the Slovene, the adjective, and we have our own abbreviation. And also this one is included in the, within the um, entries of the dictionary. So this is how it is composed. You can maybe, it's, maybe it's, it's easier to open it and to check for yourself in case you would like to see. It's more the uh, structure of, that I'm preparing right now. So the bigger one where the foreign, are, the foreign abbreviations are involved, it's a bit uh, different and it's more demanding, to be honest. One thing that was also problematic within the automatic extractions are abbreviations that are foreign, foreign, but the expansion is Slovene. And then the matching is not working very well. So this was here and there a bit problematic. Um, but uh, after the rest was in a way prepared smoothly. Um, so I would like to finish maybe with the little two uh, sentences that are um, available here. Um, and also um, that I think it's a nice contribution to my language. And I'm happy that I started first with the Slovene one. And I'm happy that I have enough material to move on and hopefully in the following years prepare a bit more so that it will be really similar to and in a way um, comparable to other dictionaries from um, important languages um, that I mentioned today. Thank you for your attention. If you would like a spare copy, I have seven books with me. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, any questions from the audience? Any? Um, thank you. Um, just one question. If I understand it correctly, the extraction method was based on uh, journalistic data. Yes, and, uh, mainly, so I, yes. I, I wanted to ask you if you um, uh, had to add uh, the abbreviations that are uh, appearing online, for example, in Czech we use a lot of um, uh, formally English, such as AKA also, or in my opinion or something like that. And these would not appear, at least in our case, in, in journalistic texts because, because newspapers are too conservative to, right. to use those. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that, that was my question. If you had to uh, expand uh, um, beyond the, the, the journalistic data you've used as a source. First, I started collecting them manually. So really, really long time ago, uh, I checked different sources, different dictionaries. I extract them from different sources that were available in, for Slovene. And then afterwards, let's say after year 2009, I start no, 10 maybe, I started with the automatic extraction. And yes, we used the newspapers. It was the easiest way 
okay at that time, um, DLO. And yes, I know that, that those problems arise. But for example, abbreviations like LOL or Be Right Back are not included here because this is the, just the Slovene. So we would then include the, if we have the alternative for Slovene. But still, in the big one, so the six, 700 pages, they are included. But then they were most probably included in a different way, mainly manually. Among the manual inclusion, it's also are also abbreviations that are short with words that are um, lowercase letters with a period. They do appear in newspapers as well, uh, but we don't obtain the expansion of them. So if you have example, as it is in English or uh, etc., you will never find one next to the other. So some they need to be at all times included in this way. Um, well, the best way would be to um, have the, the algorithm working somewhere, like a little bug somewhere, and just extracting from different sources um, all the abbreviation. But still, we would need to check everything, how genuine they are, if we still work, that we use them to include them in the dictionary. So we have, we have limitations, as I said some COVID abbreviation that were very popular two years ago, we don't, we don't use them anymore. And there is the question of, shall we put it in the dictionary or not? So I hope I answered the question. All right, thanks very much. Any more questions from anyone? Are there any online questions? Oh, there's a question here. <laughs> thanks a lot. Um, you mentioned that you included terminological abbreviations, right, in this overview. But where, how did you stop there? <laughs> well, did you have one, one overarching rule over all terminological areas or? Yeah, well, as a person who is working within the humanities, it's much easier for me to take them from those areas and sub areas when it comes to natural sciences i left all my knowledge of chemistry in high school so very long time ago um, what i also did and I, I forgot to tell is that i included but they are not visible the um, field qualifier so from which field are coming if we say but some are still generic right but maybe there is an abbreviation used in linguistics, some in economy. And I did that uh, just, and the whole dictionary uh, that I have, 700 pages is structured like that. But I had a lot of problems with uh, natural sciences. I'm not an expert, it was very difficult. Is it belonging to one field? Maybe it's belonging to two fields. So it could be chemistry, biochemistry. So there is problematic, but I still say, said to myself, I will leave it. Maybe a colleague from mine will prepare a dictionary of, I don't know, um, it could, ter terms related to the economy and finance and it could come to me and I can extract with a simple click all those abbreviations that are applicable to his or her, let's say, field. Uh, still, the person needs then to check manually if everything is okay. But due to the fact that I entered uh, uh, field qualifiers, at least I prepared in a way the database so that somebody else could use it in the future. So, yeah, uh, there's still a lot of things that are missing. Maybe the, a good thing would be to uh, have the ability to use maybe scientific papers um, and then extract from there, from different fields. It's something that I do with my student, but for something else, uh, we extract some other data from the text of criminal justice and security, where also abbreviations are very often present. All right, any more questions from anyone? If not, then I might have a question. I'm used to dealing with uh, abbreviations in the context of terminology and terminological databases where abbreviations are usually treated as just another type of term. Yeah. And I've noticed that your database of abbreviations is on the Termania website. Yeah. Is it somehow integrated with the other terminology entries that are on that website or is the, it kind of completely separate? No, no, it's separate because I did that with the, um, uh, the, the, the dictionary, the, the second one that I showed. Well, the only one that is available on Termania is basically automatically compiled uh, and it's from the newspaper articles. So it's, um, 
Right, so it's general, like, it's a gen from general text, actually. So it's, not, it's not so well integrated into any other database. No, no, it's no, no, no. Thing. It's a separate thing, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, maybe one last question. Yep. What is the connection with invisible lexicography? What's invisible here? Do you consider yourself invisible in this work? Or? Well, <laughs> the invisible is basically to to use a, an algorithm for the preparation of that and, and everything that does. So, well, the automatic dictionary. So this one is half automatic, half. Uh, so the lexicographer is invisible there, but especially the one that was published back in 2011, it's completely invisible. People don't know. They would think a human being was there collecting everything. And if I just say that for the first database that has 5,000 entries, I don't know, I needed maybe five years to prepare everything. And the algorithm extracts, uh, uh, well, after the extraction provides two to 3,000 abbreviation in 30 minutes. It's really a, an, in, an invisible individual who is helping in the preparation. And then also the automatic invisible thing connected to lemmatization and the rest. And uh, adding the languages and the rest. So I hope it's invisible enough. Uh, I'd say it qualifies. Yeah. <laughs> okay, That's it. why I was inviting. <laughs> I was invited to come. Yeah. So thanks very much. Uh, that concludes this talk and we come back in five minutes for the last talk in this particular block. So thank, thank you. you.